What's up, cool people? Welcome to another live stream. How's everybody doing today? So, of course, you know me. My name's Matt, a.k.a. that random Christian gamer. Uh, and this will be our usual kind of recording session stream thing going on. Uh, kicking it off with some Bible study, then we'll get into Kingdom Hearts. And, yeah, that's pretty much how we run things that's pretty much me <laughs> and what I do it's like you know I enjoy video games a lot I'm also a Christian just kind of blending the two together here um but anyway um I don't think I have any significant updates or anything like that other than I did cut I did pretty much officially decide that I will do an extra live stream tomorrow to celebrate hitting 100 followers on Twitch. So that that, that is officially a thing. Um, and yeah, not too much else that I need to update y'all on. It's kind of warm around here today. Uh, yeah. It might have finally hit that point of the year in Texas where the weather just kind of broke off from any kind of cold that was there and decided, all right, it's it's warm season now. <laughs> so, eh. I don't know if I need to do it necessarily today, but sometime soon I'm going to have to at least turn on a fan and uh, then start worrying about other things to do to stay cool <laughs> anyway all right well I suppose it's about time we uh hop right over to the bible study stuff and uh really get things rolling here might as well uh run the ad break on twitch as i kind of get that transition going but anyway got to couple of things to adjust with like chat and activity windows especially for twitch I don't know why sometimes like I grab the top of the activity feed window for twitch and then it decides to like, start shrinking the window instead. I don't know. All kinds of weird stuff. Also, I do not really like how the pop-out version of the Twitch chat window still includes the, like, gift a sub or whatever thing like that is at the top. Because when I'm making the window smaller like that it's not really ideal but anywho okay pulling up the bible study now we got two chapters this week and it's pretty much going to be two chapters any of the remaining streams for the rest of the time we're going through first samuel um with the possible exception of maybe like I don't know if we'll still be in 1 Samuel then, but after I come back from a trip that I plan on taking in late May to early June, I might have a little catching up to do on some things, but I don't know. We'll see, because I've actually slowly been getting myself a little bit further ahead lately anyway, as far as my like video recording and editing backlog and having stuff scheduled on YouTube. But anywho, uh, okay. So, we've got our chapters of Bible study lined up for the day. I only really looked at the length of chapter six, but, like, I don't plan on doing more than two chapters. I never plan on doing less than two chapters, unless I'm really in a rush. So suppose the length doesn't really matter so much. 
So yeah, I uh, suppose we will get rolling with this, and then um, I'll kind of explain what's going on, you know, as I, because I'm recording things in the meantime, I want to make sure I start recording before I get into any explanation of context for the chapter. Anyway, enough uh, just talking about it, let's actually do the thing. Okay. So we are looking at 1 Samuel chapter 6. Um, basically what happened in previous chapters was, um, you know, Samuel was born and because of a promise that his mother made, he was given to the the priests essentially as like a helper. Um, and it turned out that the lead priest, Eli, wasn't exactly doing a good job of wrangling in his sons. They were just completely being disobedient, not caring about their priestly duties the way they should have, and it wound up that God was angry with him and his sons, and just a couple chapters ago, finally decided, all right, enough is enough. <laughs> And they wound up dying in the midst of a conflict between Israel and the Philistines. Also in the midst of that, the Philistines wound up taking the Ark of the Covenant. Because Israel had uh, taken it to, or at least near the battlefield, to, you know, help get God's blessing or strength or whatever on their side as they fought. Uh, but Philistines still won, so they took the Ark of the Covenant with them. Well, then, last chapter, it turned out that wherever the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant, at least in their cities, that they wound up getting tumors. They were literally cursed with tumors just from the presence of the Ark of the Covenant being there. There was also, like, a statue of Dagon that wound up falling over and breaking in half because of being near the Ark of the Covenant. So, at this point, the Philistines are like, this is ridiculous. We clearly should not have this here. We need to return it. And it seems like that's what they're about to do in this chapter. So, 1 Samuel chapter 6, here we go. The Ark of the Lord remained in Philistine territory seven months in all. Then the Philistines called in their priests and diviners and asked them, What should we do about the Ark of the Lord? Tell us how to return it to its own country. Send the Ark of God of Israel back with a gift, they were told. Send a guilt offering so the plague will stop. Then, if you are healed, you will know it was his hand that caused the plague. Uh, okay, so I don't know necessarily if the Philistines were familiar with Israelite guilt offerings and what was supposed to be included with those. Seems like maybe they're about to get into that. But, uh, I guess there was still concern that even after returning it, you know, the Lord would still be upset with them for having taken it in the first place, basically. So, they're just trying to make extra sure that they do whatever they can, whatever is necessary, to get this plague of tumors away from them. Uh, oh yeah, and it, it was in at least three different Philistine cities apparently over the course of seven months. <laughs> That's how probably relatively little time that it took for them to be like, nope, this ain't worth it. Get it out of here. So anyway, uh, verse four. What sort of guilt offering should we send, they asked. And they were told, since the plague has struck both you and your five rulers, Make five gold tumors and five gold rats, just like those that have ravaged your land. 
Make these things to show honor to the God of Israel. Perhaps then he will stop afflicting you, your gods, and your land. Don't be stubborn and rebellious as Pharaoh and the Egyptians were. By the time God was finished with them, they were eager to let Israel go. Okay, so, yeah, no, this was not a... This was not an Israelite guilt offering that they were giving here. Um, now, it mentions uh, the five rulers being stricken, but it only specifically mentioned three cities that it was in in the last chapter. Not quite sure how that math works out. Maybe there were other cities that it got passed around to that just weren't mentioned. But in any case, it would be it would be fitting, you know, not only relative to the five rulers, but if it was five different cities that the Ark of the Covenant was in, if, you know, then they had this, you know, offering of five gold tumors. How does one make a gold tumor? I don't know. And then five gold rats, because there were rats as well involved with, you know, this plague that was coming upon them. There were rat infestations anywhere in Philistine territory that the Ark of the Covenant went. So, would be extra fitting if it was also five different cities that were affected by this. But anyway... So that's the suggestion of their, uh, what do they call them, priests and diviners. But uh, let's see how it turns out. Moving along to verse 7. Now build a new cart and find two cows that have just given birth to calves. Make sure the cows have never been yoked to a cart. Hitch the cows to the cart but shut their calves away from them in a pen. Put the Ark of the Lord on the cart, and beside it place a chest containing the gold rats and gold tumors you are sending as a guilt offering. Then let the cows go wherever they want. If they cross the border of our land and go to Beth Shemesh, we will know it was the Lord who brought this great disaster upon us. If they don't, we will know it was not his hand that caused the plague. It came simply by chance. Okay, so they're also trying to do all this stuff as a way of figuring out whether or not this is actually a curse from the God of Israel. Uh, and I guess the, 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 this would now have two different signs at least included in the process. First off, if these cows wind up going across the border into Israel, that's sign number one. And then, if they also get healed of the tumors and all that kind of stuff that's been plaguing them goes away, that'll be the second sign. Pretty much confirming that, yep, it was, it was their God. <laughs> and he was mad at us. Uh, so then in verse 10... So these instructions were carried out. Two cows were hitched to the cart, and their newborn calves were shut up in a pen. Then the Ark of the Lord and the chest containing the gold rats and gold tumors were placed on the cart. And sure enough, without veering off in other directions, the cows went straight along the road toward Beth Shemesh, lowing as they went. The Philistine rulers followed them as far as the border of Beth Shemesh. So... Does that mean they didn't have anybody steering the cart at all? Or was it just a, all right, we're going to have somebody here. I mean, you wouldn't have the person steering it anyway, but, you know, I guess typically you would have had somebody to at least drive them forward. So maybe it was they had somebody driving them forward, but not like trying to force them to go a particular direction. Either way, the, the, the cows went to Beth Shemesh, to the border, and, yeah, that, there's sign number one. 
And then we get to verse 13. The people of Beth Shemesh were harvesting wheat in the valley, and when they saw the ark, they were overjoyed. The cart came into the field of a man named Joshua and stopped beside a large rock. So the people broke up the wood of the cart for a fire and killed the cows and sacrificed them to the Lord as a burnt offering. Several men of the tribe of Levi lifted the ark of the Lord and the chest containing the gold rats and gold tumors from the cart and placed them on, a, on the large rock. Many sacrifices and burnt offerings were offered to the Lord that day by the people of Beth Shemesh. The five Philistine rulers watched all this and then returned to Ekron that same day. The five gold tumors sent by the Philistines as a guilt offering to the Lord were gifts from the rulers of Ashdod, Gaza, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron. The five gold rats represented the five Philistine towns and their surrounding villages, which were controlled by the five rulers. The large rock at Beth Shemesh, where they set the Ark of the Lord, still stands in the field of Joshua as a witness to what happened there. This is definitely a different Joshua than the one, you know, that the book of the Bible is named after. Because he had died well before this. But, anyway. Um, so, the... Israelites now have the Ark of the Covenant again, and when this cart got to them, they basically made an offering to God, including the cows who were driving the cart. Um, so then, do, 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 do. now Ekron was the last city that was listed in the previous chapter that you know, was a Philistine town where the Ark had been. Um, but it mentions, okay, I'm pretty sure I remember Ashdod. Well, you know what? Let me just go back to the previous chapter real quick and make sure I'm not missing any towns that were mentioned. Okay, so Ashdod was first. Uh, but... but and then, still Ashdod. And then, now it did affect nearby villages, wherever it went. So that could also be a thing if any of these major towns were close to each other. Um, also, so they sent that to Gath. And then... After Gath, they sent it to Ekron, but it doesn't mention the other. It doesn't mention the other cities where the rulers were here. So I'm not quite sure. Again, maybe Gaza and Ashkelon were near some of these other three towns, but in any case, it, that that I suppose was the reason why there were the five rats uh, or the, the five gold rats represented the towns, the five tumors represented the, the rulers. So yes, there was some significance to that number kind of unsurprisingly. Uh, footnote there at large rock. Uh, that's how it reads in some Hebrew manuscripts in the Greek version. Most Hebrew manuscripts read, Great Meadow or Abel Hagedola. So, I'm not, I guess it's saying that's where the large rock was or something like that. Or maybe it was, maybe that actually reads that it was a great meadow instead. Either way. Just certain town in Israel, this is where all this happened. Anyway, um, and then we get to verse 19. But the Lord killed 70 men from Beth Shemesh because they looked into the ark of the Lord. And the people mourned greatly because of what the Lord had done. Who is able to stand in the presence of the Lord, this holy God, they cried out. 
Where can we send the Ark from here? So they sent messengers to the people of Kiriath Jerim and told them, The Philistines have returned the Ark of the Lord. Come here and get it. Um, so it's, for a second, it's like, okay, wait, why did 70 men from Beth Shemesh die? Well, because they, it says they looked into the Ark of the Lord, which implies that they, like, opened it up and looked at what was inside there, which nobody's supposed to do except maybe the high priest. Um, but there's a footnote there. As in a few Hebrew manuscripts, most Hebrew manuscripts read 70 men, 50,000 men. What? Perhaps the text should be understood to read the Lord killed 70 men and 50 oxen. That makes me think there's something in Hebrew to where like, I don't know. Thousand men and oxen wind up looking kind of similar. Because saying 70 men and then 50,000 men would make no sense. But 70 men and 50 oxen, okay, that's a little more reasonable. So anyway, uh, the... The Ark is being moved to Kiriath Jerim, which I know there's, or at least I'm pretty sure there's another name for that town. I'm not sure if that's also known as Shiloh, because if that is, then that's where the Ark of the Covenant belongs. That's where the tabernacle was. Eventually, if this isn't it, that's where the Ark should be making its way toward. But... We'll maybe get more on that in the next chapter. But that does it for uh, 1 Samuel chapter 6. So then we move along. Yep, another lack of subsection heading to start a chapter. Okay, um... Let me get a sip of water here real quick. And then I suppose we will continue. No need to really wait for anything else in the meantime. <clears throat> okay, so now we are looking at 1 Samuel 7. Um... The Ark of the Covenant has been returned to Israel at this point. It was, you know, in the possession of the Philistines, but they kept getting plagued with rats and tumors, and so they decided it wasn't worth it and sent it on back to Israel. And now I guess the Israelites are trying to get the Ark of the Covenant back where it should go. Anyway... Um, yeah. So here we go. First Samuel chapter 7. So the men of kiriath Jerim came to get the Ark of the Lord. They took it to the hillside home of Abinadab and ordained Eleazar his son to be in charge of it. The Ark remained in kiriath Jerim for a long time, twenty years in all. During that time, all Israel mourned because it seemed the Lord had abandoned them. Okay, now, they brought it to Kiriath Jerim from Beth Shemesh. Because Beth Shemesh was, like, apparently the nearest town to the border of the Philistines. So, Philistines sent it there. And then people of Beth Shemesh were like, hey, this doesn't belong here. We also have some of our men dying from looking in it. Um, so, yeah, let's move this thing along. So they moved it to kiriath Jerim. But it says 20 years it was there, and it seemed the Lord had abandoned them. Which, yeah, that definitely doesn't seem like the Ark is where it belongs. And that could have something to do with it. 
Uh, so then we get to verse 3. Then Samuel said to all the people of Israel, If you want to return to the Lord with all your hearts, get rid of your foreign gods and your images of Ashtoreth. Turn your hearts to the Lord and obey him alone. Then he will rescue you from the Philistines. So the Israelites got rid of their images of Baal and Ashtoreth and worshipped only the Lord. Then Samuel told them, Gather all of Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered at Mizpah and, in a great ceremony, drew water from a well and poured it out before the Lord. They also went without food all day and confessed that they had sinned against the Lord. It was at Mizpah that Samuel became Israel's judge. So, up to this point, I mean, it was pretty well known that Samuel was able to hear from the Lord. Um, but he wasn't, I guess, really officially established as, like, you know, lead priest or judge or any sort of official ruler of any type or official leader might be a better word. Um, but basically, you know, in response to it feeling like the Lord had abandoned them, Samuel's like, all right, well, you want the Lord to be with you? Here's what you do. Throw out all those idols and uh, confess your sin. So that's what they do. Uh, and they gather at Mizpah specifically to do this. Um, and I guess sort of at that point was when they recognized how how much of a leader Samuel really was amongst them. So that's, I guess, why it became official that Samuel was Israel's judge then. Anyway, uh, then verse 7. When the Philistine rulers heard that Israel had gathered at Mizpah, they mobilized their army and advanced. The Israelites were badly frightened when they learned that the Philistines were approaching. Don't stop pleading with the Lord our God to save us from the Philistines, they begged Samuel. So Samuel took a young lamb and offered it to the Lord as a whole burnt offering. He pleaded with the Lord to help Israel, and the Lord answered him. Just as Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines arrived to attack Israel. But the Lord spoke with a mighty voice of thunder from heaven that day, and the Philistines were thrown into such a confusion that the Israelites defeated them. The men of Israel chased them from Mizpah to a place below beth slaughtering them all along the way. Okay, so... <laughs> you've got... Them working on doing better, you know, getting back to, you know, a, a better standing with the Lord. Um, but then the Philistines hear that, hey, all these Israelites are gathered in this one place. Now might be a good time to attack and, like, wipe them out. But, of course, Israel hears about it. And... Because of Samuel's pleas with the Lord and, you know, his offering and all that, the Lord winds up, you know, coming to defend them again. And it's obvious that it was the Lord because he, like, throws the Philistines into total confusion. And then, you know, Israel's men are able to attack and defeat the Philistines that were there because essentially the Philistines in their confusion start running all over the place probably mostly away from Mizpah okay uh, then verse 12 Samuel then took a large stone and placed it between the towns of Mizpah and Yeshana he named it Ebenezer which means the stone of help for he said, up to this point, the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued and didn't invade Israel again for some time. And throughout Samuel's lifetime, the Lord's powerful hand was raised against the Philistines. The Israelite villages near Ekron and Gath that the Philistines had captured were restored to Israel. 
along with the rest of the territory that the Philistines had taken. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites in those days. Samuel continued as Israel's judge for the rest of his life. Each year he traveled around, setting up his court first at Bethel, then at Gilgal, and then at Mizpah. He judged the people of Israel at each of these places. Then he would return to his home in Ramah, and he would hear cases there too. And Samuel built an altar to the Lord at Ramah. Okay. I figured I'd just wrap up reading the chapter since we were kind of close to the end. Um, so, now, the, th- the thing I'm wondering is, it mentions the, or maybe at least the stone, either the stone or maybe the town where the stone was set up, being called Ebenezer. If I remember right, back in chapter 5, or 4, I don't know. Uh, You know what? Let me just go ahead and look back at that. But I think it mentioned that the fighting that was taking place happened at Ebenezer. Yeah, took it from the battleground at Ebenezer to the town of Ashdod. Was that place called Ebenezer before this stone was set up? I don't know, but the initial readers and hearers of this would have known it probably as Ebenezer at the time anyway. So that could have just been a clue to them of where the fighting was happening before. Um, so anyway, he sets up the stone and names it that because of the Lord helping them. And basically things are a lot more peaceful for Israel, at least for a while. And Samuel continues serving as judge, apparently doing sort of a, I don't know, a regular tour, you might say, of some of the towns and acting as judge in those areas. Doesn't really say for how long each time, But I guess the idea was sort of like how they had Levites or were supposed to have Levites spread around Israel to, you know, have various places for people to do their regular offerings and sacrifices and that kind of stuff. Uh, Samuel wanted to, you know, not require people to travel from wherever they were, to a specific spot. So he probably did that to just make it a little easier and reduce the necessary travel for people to, you know, hear from him and get his rulings or messages or whatever. Anyway, uh, real quick, footnote there. Uh, That's as in the Greek and Syriac versions. Hebrew reads Shen... Rather than uh, just Shanna. Uh, but still, with the Hebrew language, especially ancient Hebrew being what it was, uh, it's there's kind of multiple different possible spellings and things like that. But um, yeah, not really... Too much else going on there. Uh, It still doesn't really explain much what's going on with the actual priesthood at this point. It just mentions Samuel being judge and doing all that stuff for the people. But anyway, um, I mean, the book's far from over, so I doubt we've heard the last of what Samuel is going to do. We're just, you know... I guess because it was established pretty much around this point uh, that Samuel was judge, it's like, hey, just projecting a little bit from here. Yeah, Samuel wind up being the judge for the rest of his life. Uh, so this was kind of a major, a, a major moment in Samuel's life and 
for the people of Israel in general. But anyway, that looks to be all we've got for 1 Samuel chapter 7. Okay. <clears throat> and pretty soon I will be switching things over to video games. But um, I might like to check all these notifications on my phone before doing that. Getting some text messages about things, okay. Some of it's about uh, a lunch get-together. Yeah, I've been able to uh, kind of reconnect with some of my former co-workers lately. And, um, like, co-workers that I haven't really seen much, if at all, for a few years now. So, yeah, um, <laughs> that is, has, or at least is looking to be a, a sort of another benefit to the recent job change and the flexibility that that has, you know, brought about within my schedule and whatnot. So anyway, um, now I'm just looking at, I also kind of made it more publicly known about the recent job change on Facebook and people are commenting on that. Uh, to do, to do. <laughs> Including my one uh, former supervisor from that same job that these coworkers of mine, are, like where I know them from and worked with them at. Anywho, um, okay. So it's about time we uh, get Kingdom Hearts loaded up and ready to go here. I've got more text messages coming in, probably trying to figure out lunch tomorrow. Anyway, okay. So, yeah, transition time. We'll be running ad break on Twitch while that happens. Um, but stay tuned, for I will return shortly. And for those of you not seeing an ad break, I will just move things over to this, boot up the game, and we'll get rolling with that kind of stuff. Anywho, you, I'm also stepping away for a sec, so muting my microphone.
Okay. I'm back now. I do need to uh, change the category on Twitch. As much as I would love to do that a bit more on YouTube, if I change it for, you know, if I change that at all, I change it for the entire video. It's not like it, uh, it's not like attempting to adjust it midstream really does much. Alright, okay, so I left things off at the accessory shop, and, um, I should actually head to Merlin's place. And I think once I get there, I will actually start recording again. items for these dudes right now. Gotta mean, more items is not a bad thing. Okay. Now that all that fighting is done, maybe I can actually go over here. recording here is because the first thing I'm going to do is uh, some hundred acre wood stuff. So anyway. Alrighty. And just because I'm recording stuff doesn't mean I want y'all to completely stay away from chat or whatever. Feel free to comment and whatnot. Uh, just know that I might not get to it right away. And, um, if it goes super duper off topic, I might not really mention it at all. At least not while I'm recording. Anywho. Okay. Here we go. Alrighty. So, um, you find me here in the Magician Study because I'm realizing I have some torn pages. Which means stuff in the Hundred Acre Wood. And I would like to do that before I move along to any other worlds that uh, might be available. Did I? I'm pretty sure I did stuff. This might be new. Broad expanse of vegetable fields. Yeah, that sounds like I haven't done that yet. That's not actually a cutscene, is it? Nope. Carrots. I don't know if I want to pull those up. Pumpkins. And cabbage. Mailbox. There's a letter inside. I hope we'll be finding more honey together soon. Ooh. Mm okay. Anything else? Yeah. And the mailbox says rabbit. Hello. Look, Rabbit's house came back, but it looks like Rabbit isn't home. Who's been calling and calling? But the house says no one's there. The house says no one's there, eh? No 
Nobody's home? That's right, nobody. Mm-hmm. That would be quite concerning if this were Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> Who is this person named Nobody? Nobody? Have you seen Rabbit? No, no Rabbit here. There's no one here. Hello, Rabbit. Why, Pooh, <laughs> what a pleasant surprise. Nice to see you too, Piglet. And... Is this a new friend? Pooh, I'm sorry, but... I'm all out of honey at the moment. Let's see here. <laughs> Sora, do you smell honey? I don't know. So, Rabbit came back too, but someone's still missing. Some places in the Hundred Acre Ward are gone too. Oh, what to do? I don't really feel like going back and forth between webcam and, and not terribly often. So, some of this dialogue that isn't like a full-on scene I might just keep the webcam there even if it's slightly in the way I have nothing to give Pooh don't waste your time looking around oh really honey now how did that get up there <laughs> would you like some Pooh don't feel you have to, of course. Oh, thank you, Rabbit. I would like just a small smackerel. I'm quite hungry. Um, Pooh Bear? You're not eating the whole pot, are you? Once you start, there's no stopping you, is there? Yeah. And again, okay. It makes me a little bit curious, because normally we just, you know, add honey as, you know, a flavor to other things. How filling would honey be on its own? I'm so glad to have found both rabbit and some honey. Oh, out of honey again. And Piglet says the same thing. Alright. I suppose I leave Rabbit's house now? Is there anything else I should do? Help! Uh, that went away too quick. All this because he can't stop liking honey so much. If Pooh doesn't slim down, my house will stay plugged up forever. If only there were something we could do. Oh, what to do? Oh, help and bother. I'm stuck again. I came in through this hole, so it must have shrunk. Really? There's absolutely no way that you got bigger. Oh, how will I eat honey if I'm stuck here? When it's lunchtime, perhaps you could bring me a honey jar. No honey till you're unstuck. If Pooh doesn't slim down, my house will stay plugged up forever. If only there were something we could do. You said that inside the house, too. Wait, I know. A bit of carrot top juice will do the trick. Anyway, hello. Or is it Lorimizer? I think that's. Anyway, 
Apparently honey goes straight to your hips. Uh, or... And or stomach. In this case. Anyway, hello, welcome to the stream. Glad to have you here. Um... I have a carrot patch on the other side of the stream. Carrot top juice is just the ticket to slimming down. Oh, uh... Oh, what's the problem now? Oh, Tigger. Here. Let me get the webcam out of the way in case he uh, bounces on anything that I'm uh, covering up. Hey there, name's Tigger. T-I-double-G-U-R, that spells Tigger. Well now, I don't think I've ever seen you before. Hello, Tigger. You've just bounced my new friend, Sora. Hey, Pooh. Say, you're looking mighty uncomfy today. Is that some new exercise? Why, bouncing around is a lot more fun. <sighs> Why do you bounce around so much, Tigger? Why? Because bouncing's what Tigger's do best! Speaking of which, my bouncing spot has gone and disappeared! So for now, this will be my new bouncing ground! <laughs> More evidence about uh, what Piglet was saying earlier about other places still being gone. Anyway. Tigger's bouncing will ruin my vegetables! And if we don't give Pooh some carrot top juice, he'll be stuck forever. Please help me. Keep Tigger away from my carrots. This is quite a fix, but I have just the solution. Pay attention now. Sora, you'll have to protect this carrot patch. If Tigger bounces on a carrot twice, it'll be buried. Once. Twice. I mean, there's still a leaf there. You can see it. Although trying to pull the whole thing up by the leaf wouldn't work very well. Anyway, just like that. Protect the carrots from Tigger's bounces and you'll receive points. How, you ask? It's elementary. Simply get to the carrots before Tigger lands on them. There are 15 carrots here. Your score depends on how many you save and how many times you block Tigger. Oh, and one more thing. The rush command is the key to a high score. Select rush while near a carrot that isn't buried yet. You'll dash to the target area before Tigger lands. Well, good luck! And that's just how the whole thing's gonna work. Okay. Little thing there, I guess I can bring the webcam back in. Uh, beat Tigger to the carrots before he bounces them into the ground. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Oh, come on. I had to move to a different carrot first, I guess. This is... a bit odd. Because it's like... It doesn't really... do the rush command at certain angles. Didn't quite get there. Yeah, it seems to be available a lot, like, in between the carrots, too. So I don't know why it tried to make it sound like you had to be right near one of the unburied carrots to make it work. But whatever. Time's blocked. 14. Carrot saved? Really, all 15. I guess the ones that got hit only got hit once each. Final score, 210. 
Did it just like multiply the numbers together? What's going on? Nobody keeps up with Tiggers. Hmm. Maybe there's something wrong with my tail. Or maybe I'm just as good as as good at uh, protecting the carrots as you are at bouncing on them. Thank you so much. Now I'd better make that carrot top juice. I'll get the carrots, so please wait inside the house. And the bridge is broken now. That bridge was not broken before. I guess it showed Tigger doing that. Alrighty, well, uh, inside the house, he said. So that's where we'll go. Oh, what a day. I gave Pooh the carrot top juice. All we have to do now is push him out. Just a little push should do. Mm-hmm. Just a little push. <laughs> well, that was definitely a harder push than necessary. <laughs> First my vegetable patch, and now this. Oh, oh bother. Oh, where am I? It's ever so dark in here. Well, it isn't so bad, I suppose. <laughs> there is plenty of honey. <laughs> I thought there wasn't any more honey. Torn page turned into a new item. Mithril shard. Helpful for synthesizing stuff, I think. Oh, hello. This was not here before. Let's move along to this one. Swing hangs from a stout tree. Look, Pooh. Something's floating this way. I think you're right, Piglet. What could it be? That doesn't look like just a something. Why, it looks like Eeyore. Hello, Eeyore, if it is you. Floating along. <laughs> Hello, Pooh. Yes, it's me. Could you pull me out? That is, if it's not too much trouble. Of course, you don't have to if you don't want to. I may not have watched a lot of Winnie the Pooh, but I've heard enough to have a general idea of Eeyore's voice. That's not maybe my best Eeyore impression, but still. Uh, oh, hello. Thanks again for your help with my carrots. I will confess, though, I don't remember exactly what Rabbit's voice sounds like. Um, oh, jeez. Uh, is Eeyore going to come back around? Because he's way over there, or maybe I'm just supposed to get him from there. Okay, that'll work. Thank you, Pooh. Thank you, other you. You know, floating along out there, it seemed like something was missing. And something's still missing. Why, Eeyore's tail is gone. Is that what's missing? Let's see. Yep, lost it again. Wonder where it went this time. It's not much of a tale, though I'm sort of attached to it. But I don't know why anybody'd look for it. Probably won't find it anyway. Sora, why don't we all look for Eeyore's tail? Lost something? And here comes Owl again. Presumably. 
Searching from a high place is the quickest way to find it. Owl, can you fly up high and help us find Eeyore's tail? Sorry, but my eyes aren't what they used to be. Too much reading, you know. I don't know if reading is actually known to do that to your eyes. But I can offer good advice. Of course, you don't have to... Oh, wait, this is Eeyore talking now. Of course, you don't have to if you don't want to. See that swing up there? Take Pooh there. You're a bit too big for the swing, but Pooh should fit nicely. I'll tell you more when you get there. And how exactly do I, uh... Guide Pooh over there? I wouldn't think hitting him would be the way to do it. Um... Hello? I thought there was supposed to be some sort of, like, other command or something I do to get Pooh over there. Oh. Who will follow you... That Who will follow you if you target him with Ray Bumper? There we go. Okay. That's how you do it. Maybe I was thinking of Kingdom Hearts 2, where you have to, like, specifically wave him over or whatever. Okay. Yep, gotta just keep following this around. Oh, no, poo. Uh, now we gotta wait for him to eat some honey. Okay. Alright, let's try to stay on task this time. Although, maybe he did that because I stopped locking onto him. I only did that because the camera angle was getting a little weird and I wanted to make sure I was headed the right way. No matter, we shall get there eventually. And here we are. And more directions from Owl, right? Here's what to do. First, get ready to push. How? Like this. Like this? Then press right bumper to give Boo to give Poo a push. <laughs> press right bumper. How's this? Not bad, not bad. Here's the next step. Press right bumper before he swings back to the bottom. If you time it right, Pooh will swing higher and higher. Try it. I'll help you with the timing. Press right bumper when I spread my wings. Push too soon, and Pooh won't go any higher. And push too late, and he'll go too high. Alright. Here we go. Uh, I think he went too far. Or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe he's supposed to go that far to look for the tail. Actually, no. If uh, memory serves me right, he's supposed to come crashing down right here. And that means now I gotta... Yeah. Even he thinks he flew too far. Let's try again, okay. Careful now, Eeyore's counting on us to find that tail. Give Pooh honey to pep him up. Okay, hmm. And he spreads his wings. <laughs> I might have done it a little too late once or twice there on the first attempt. And there it is. Hmm. That looks familiar. Uh, 
All right. Maybe I'll get the webcam out of the way for a little bit. How's it looking? There we go. It's not much of a tail, but it's mine. Thanks, everyone. I wish we could put the Hundred Acre Wood back to the way it was, too. Okay, is there a particular reason it zoomed out like that? Torn page turned into a new item. Oh, hello. Our stop magic has been upgraded. I haven't saved in a little while. Let me save real quick. And yes, I know the webcam is still not there. There's like so much dialogue in these sections that I'm starting to wonder if maybe I should just leave it not in the way the whole time. There's a clearing crowded with tree stumps. Let's take a look. And Tigger's here. Along with... I think that one's Rue. Pretty sure Kanga's the larger one that I think is Rue's mother. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Should I attempt to do Tigger's voice? I don't know. No, this is what Channel Point Redemptions are for. I have a voice acting Channel Redemption in there for a reason. If I voice act all the time, it makes that pointless. Literally, because people won't be spending the points. Anyway. <laughs> This here is my bouncing spot. We can bounce around here all day. Nothing beats bouncing. You want to bounce too, Sora? It's lots of fun. Okay. To bounce with the finest, you'll need some pointers from the finest. Oh, I... Is... I'm like, is Owl considering himself the finest? basically what Rue's saying right here. But Owl, you don't bounce around like we do. I'm afraid you're right. I can't master everything, I suppose. Bounce this way, please. Okay, I have bounced. Tigger bounce. Watch Tigger's bouncing pattern, then follow his lead. Here's a little warm up. Alrighty. Hip. This would be easier if I had the high jump ability. I have it, it just doesn't let me use it here. <laughs> now it gets tricky. Okay, so, I'm gonna go back this way first. It is a little bit tricky, especially if I don't move the camera around to look at, uh, where I'm bouncing. But you know what? So far, so good. <laughs> Alrighty. I forget how many rounds of this that I have to do. You're doing fantastical. This will be the last one. Well, okay, I guess that answers my question. Oh, geez. Gotta bounce on there first. Go up to the tree branch, and then down, and over to the hill. Okay. Yep. This is probably the hard part. Yep. 
Jumped a little too far there. Alrighty. Gotta try it again. bit disappointing that I have to watch Tigger explain it every time. But hopefully that should do it. Alrighty. You've gotten mighty good at bouncing, Sora. Right, Rue? Okay, so that one is Rue. Okay, now what? Nothing? Or do I need to talk to Rue? Hey, Tigger. I think he's ready for the big one. Well, there's only one way to find out. Tigger's giant pot. Whack the nuts back at the pot to shatter it. Oh, uh. duh. Nope. Really? Yeah. Nope. Maybe I jump and hit him. Yeah. That's better. <coughs> Seems like getting multiple in a row leads to uh, higher point value there. And now the pot's broken. Ooh, treasure. AP up. More ability points. Um. Wow, Sora, you're so good at everything. All right. I don't necessarily know when the next bit of actual full-on dialogue is coming. Um. Well, there's Tigger. Let's go try the seesaw. For what? This tree doesn't have any honey, I see. Nope. No, it does not. Ooh, hello. Mithril. Yeah, eventually there's something I gotta do with those. I'm just not quite sure what. Okay. Must. Am I on my own to try to figure out what? It... Oh. Hmm. Who is not gonna follow me if I log on to this thing? Hmm. Okay. Stepping on that one lifts this up. Gotcha. Okay. Maybe it's something with these. Nope. Um, I gotta imagine I'm supposed to get something from up there. I'm just not sure what. Hmm. Come on. So, anyway, how are we all doing? <laughs> Hopefully, uh, it won't take me too long to figure out what I'm supposed to do here. Oh! Who will be your seesaw partner? Great. I... <laughs> it's always some simple little thing that I'm missing. Boo. Okay, so now I'm over here. And I'm sure I'm supposed to, like... 
jump between these tree branches to try and get stuff. Cool. Shield to gummy block, I presume. Piglet? I wonder what this is. I wasn't sure I'd be able to get onto that quickly enough. Yeah. Chest over here. Mythical shard. Um. Okay. I don't know why I thought I saw a chest over here. I guess maybe it was that other platform. Is there anything else that I might be missing around here? Rare nuts grow on these trees. I'll trade you things for them. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Uh, is that what those are? Oh, geez, okay. I'm just supposed to, like, jump at them. So I can get them. Okay. I mean, I guess that makes a little more sense. Oh, come on. I should totally be able to get that one just with the jump I'm doing there. Really? Okay, do I have to trade them one at a time? Ah, splendid. Here's something in return. Power up. Okay. More stat boosting stuff. Let's go with Tigger again and see if I find any more of those rare nuts over this way. They really don't look much like nuts to me. But, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Can I? There we go. I keep thinking I really should be able to get this. Why can't I get it? They look like plums. Yeah, they, they definitely do not look like nuts. More like some much larger fruit thing. Okay, I got a defense up for that one. So far, all kinds of stat boosting stuff, which is good. There we go. Okay. Got a mithril shard for that one. Are there still more? And he's asking for more, so I'm guessing that's a yes. Where might I find them? Now, there, were, there was another one up high when I bounced with Rue. But it didn't seem to want to let me get it. Okay. Now it works. Maybe it will only let me, only let me do one at a time. Another AP up. Okay. Uh, there's one. But how would I retrieve that? Suppose I, uh, bounce with Tigger, and then maybe jump there. Um. Nope, I'm not even at the right tree. Okay. Don't see any others over that way. So maybe that's a thing that I do with this. Really? Sometimes the little things just decide they don't want to work the way that they should. Okay. 
There we go. Uh, that's the last one I've seen so far. Or Look at all these nuts. We couldn't have done it without you. We? Who is we? You're the only one who wanted them. What are they for? It's a secret. Alright, fine then. Keep your secrets. Um, can this be broken? Nope. There might not be anything inside it. If that's the case. This is when I'm not entirely sure if there's anything else I'm supposed to do here. It doesn't seem like it. Alright, let me try leaving. And see if anything else happens. I don't know. Torn page turned into a new item. That usually means I'm done. Alright, full-blown mithril this time, not just a mithril shard. Oh, and there's even more. I thought maybe <laughs> I wouldn't end up spending the entire uh, amount of time that I have here in the Hundred Acre Wood, but, you know, when I've got all these torn pages... Oh. Hello, Slasher Runs over on YouTube. I am doing pretty good. How are you? Okay. Who's walking around in the mud here? Like he's looking for something. What are you doing, Pooh? Shh. Quiet. Or they'll get away. Who? The people who took everyone away. See their footprints? We were all sticking together to make sure no one got lost again. Uh, yes, Slasher, I'm also on Twitch. Yeah, any of the streams that I do, I'm doing Twitch and YouTube simultaneously. Anyway, back to the dialogue. But then, I saw some footprints that needed following. So I did. Suddenly, everyone was gone. Bad people must have taken them away. Actually, Pooh, I think those footprints are... Um... Anyway, I'll help you look for your friends. Okay. Examine. Hello. Eeyore? Hello. What are you doing? Looking for sticks to build my house. Again. Sticks for your house? This place already feels like a house. Seems like a great spot to gather everyone once we find them. Who's Muddy Path? Help Pooh find his lost friends. Target him with right bumper to guide him. Great. Um. Uh, what is this? Pretty flowers. Who's got to see this? Yeah. And fancy that. Still not sure how that works. Makes even less sense than it did with the balloon. can't high jump like that. Uh, that'll work. Um, hello, Tigger. Tigger, would help if you stayed still a little bit so I could talk to you. I saw Pooh walking away, so I bounced after him. Then I bounced a bit too high. And I lost sight of old Pooh Bear. Oh, 
Okay. Oh, jeez. Now I need Pooh to go down there. Maybe. Do I actually need Pooh with me as I find his friends? I'm not too sure. Oh, there's something in there. Makes me unsure if I can actually, uh... Use that. There's Piglet. There's Owl. Of course, Owl had to move right when I was about to talk with him. By the way, there is no actual time limit on this. I don't think it just keeps track of the amount of time for the sake of, you know, having it be a mini game with a record. I thought I'd better have a word with Rue about his bouncing. The next thing I knew, quite to my surprise, I was lost too. So, maybe I don't need to have Pooh with me, or maybe I do just for some things. Doesn't seem like that's gonna work. It has me targeting the spot where I'm pretty sure the web is in there. Ah, oh, well, there's Boo now. Um. Fire! Okay, that'll work. No, oh, wait, Boo. Hey, Boo. Come this way. No. Oh, okay. Sure, I guess that works. Okay, now he's inside there, and hopefully he's gonna go through there. Yeah, okay. Floating up. Um, now, how might I get him back down? Because I might need him to go down if I'm gonna get rabbit. Hello, piglet. Who? Where are we? I don't know where we are either, piglet. But if we go back the way we came, we should find home. Okay. Um, now what if I go down here? Piglet! I got scared when everyone disappeared, so I hid. Trips over Eeyore as he goes in there. Oh, hey, there's Rabbit. Hello. Owl looked so intent on something. Well, I just had to follow him. But then Owl flew off into the sky, and there I was, all by myself. Um... Now, there was mention of Rue. Is Rue somewhere around here, too? to just walk across the top. Um, is there anyone else around here? I haven't seen. I haven't seen anyone. Well, 
Well, it's not acting like it's over yet. So, maybe I still gotta find Rue? Hmm. I am a bit confused. Because I don't know where Rue would be. Oh, phooey. <laughs> um. It's only giving me one thing to lock on to, and I'm pretty sure that's poo. time with this. I would have thought that if there was anywhere else, or anyone else anywhere, that it would be pretty obvious. So, maybe that's it and I'm just not doing the right thing to get this to end? There's Rue, jeez. Okay. Doesn't seem like it's gonna let me hit him down, though. Um, who would you perhaps be able to come over this way? Maybe if you're over here with me, then Rue will come down? Oh, hey, there's Rue. Why did he come down that? I don't know. I tried bouncing as high as Tigger. I was so busy trying to bounce, I forgot to watch where I was bouncing. Yeah. Uh, there have definitely been better times for this, but oh well. Everyone's here. Hooray! Torn page turned into a new item! EXP ring! I'm so glad we're all together again! <laughs> I didn't know what to do when I was all alone. Oh, Piglet, you gotta be brave! Did Tigger just add a third syllable to Piglet's name? Lonely? Are you kidders? I'm a Tigger! The most wonderful thing about Tiggers is I'm the only one. But I do admit, friends are awfully fun too. <laughs> think, think, think. What you thinking about now? Hey, Pooh. What are you thinking about now? Oh, well, I'm just thinking about um, what to think about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm off. But Sora, where are you going? I'm gonna go look for my friends. They're waiting for me. Oh, sound back again. <laughs> I hope you find your friends. Pooh's still sitting there thinking. If only he had a thinking chair. Oh wait, wrong show.
Sora, don't forget, we shall always be here. If you'd like to visit again, that is. When I talked about sealing the keyhole in the Hundred Acre Wood, there is no visual representation of that actually happening. Unless... Unless it's that keyhole on the book. Yeah, okay. Alright, so I don't remember everything that happens. <laughs> And that does it for that. At this point, the only reason to go back afterwards is basically to uh, try and get higher scores on the mini games. I think. <laughs> Anywho, well, with as long as that took, that seems like a pretty decent episode length there. So I suppose it'll be next time that I move on to the actual, like, next world in the game. But that'll do it for this particular episode recording thing. Now, for those of you watching live, do not worry. I am not done with the stream yet. I usually fit at least two, like, episodes worth of video game stuff in per stream. Now I could just to prove my point, go back here into the Hundred Acre Wood and show that there is in fact nothing really new. I don't know if there's anything for I don't know if you get anything for having like particular scores in the mini games and whatnot. I wouldn't think so. Um, if there was this and maybe that are the only ones I could actually see any major improvements to. Well, the vegetable thing could be better too. But as of right now, I don't think I'm going to bother with that. I shall instead... Oh. Hey! Consumed by him on Twitch. Welcome to the stream. And I see the Hydrate Redemption. I shall take care of that right away. There we go. Uh, hope you're having a good day, too. So anyway, um, since my episode recordings of this game have been a bit longer than the 26 minutes I've got until an ad break kicks in, I think I'll just go ahead and run that on Twitch while I take care of some item sorting stuff and using and whatnot. And then we'll continue with more story stuff in the game. <laughs> so those on Twitch, see you in a bit if you get the ad break. Everyone else, you'll get to see me just using a couple of items and things like that that I've gotten. <laughs> okay. So that should be under items. I got a bunch of, like, stat-boosting things. And, of course, I'm using them all on Sora. Because why would you use them on anybody but Sora? Sora's the only one that you know you have with you the entire time. Um, the only exception to that might be the AP up stuff. Uh, who might currently be lacking in abilities... Uh, I'm blessed. Eight. I'm blessed. Eight. All right. 
Have a good one. I uh, will hopefully see you around there, consumed by him. So, Goofy... Uh, Donald could get Treasure Magnet with one more AP. Oh, hey. And we've got a bear over on YouTube. Hello, bear. Yeah, um... <laughs> It's been a while since I've played this game as well. Um, actually, I could get rid of Berserk and give him Treasure Magnet. Um, but yeah, I got... I Well, I recently obtained, like, the collection of games. Kind of split into two parts because Xbox. But um, got the collection of basically everything in the series... Before Kingdom Hearts 3. So I figured I'd try and play through everything. Um, and I know it's going to take me a little while to get through all the games, but the goal is to wrap all that up before Kingdom Hearts 4 would release. Now, I know there's no official release date or anything like that, but uh, rumors are such that I might want to get working on this. <laughs> now, is there anything that I could give Goofy for only one or two ability points that would be really significant. Eh. Relative to giving Sora something like stun impact, I'm gonna say not so much. So, let's use the AP ups on Sora. That way I can give him stun impact. Okay. I don't think I got any new equipment or anything like that. Oh, right, the XP ring. Increases experience obtained by 20% and slightly raises max MP. Um, That would make me lose ability points, no thanks. Uh, if I get rid of the magic armlet... Hmm. Now, my magic power would supposedly be reduced, even though it... I guess there's no official magic stat. Um. Huh. Alright, fine. Um. I could try and give Donald this magic armlet. I have to lower his defense to do so. But he'd gain more MP, which would be helpful because, you know, Donald being a mage and whatnot. Or I just slightly, well, slightly lower defense and significantly lower strength. I, I always hesitate to do anything that's not just like a pure upgrade. You know what I mean? Anywho, whatever. I guess I'll leave things at that. Uh, Bear says, have fun. Off to sleep now. Be oh, yeah. You know what, Bear? You are not the uh, first or anywhere near the only viewer I have that is, uh, well, maybe the only one I currently have, but that I have had from over in Europe. I got one of my most consistent viewers uh, who's from the UK. But anyway, uh, enough about that. Take it easy. Have a good night. Try not to hibernate too long. <laughs> Lame joke. Because cause you go by bear, I figured I'd mention hibernating. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway. Okay. About time I get back to recording stuff and actually progressing the game. So here we go. Okay. So we've done everything in the 100 acre wood. Now it's time to move along to the next actual, like, major world in the game.
Which, I think I'm just gonna warp to Halloween Town and then, uh... Actually travel to where I want to go from there. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the massively decked out gummy ship. <laughs> that was definitely a new thing in between recording sessions. My only gripe with what I did, which I guess I could fix in a different stream. Whoa, hello. Forgot how to operate the gummy ship for a second there. Anyway, my only gripe with what I did is that I've got cannons on the top that shoot out, uh, you know, to the sides. Which is definitely not what I wanted to do with those. But, hey, you know what? As a whole, this build still, still works out okay. I do also have uh, some sort of like missile thing that fire forward. And I've got actual like laser beams. So yeah, on the whole, not too much to worry about with this. And way better than the absolute basic gummy ship that I typically work with when playing through this. Uh, a big ship is catching up to us. Quit gawking, that's a pirate ship. This looks a lot like what happened with Monstro coming around and swallowing us. It's going to ram us, hold on tight. I'm not sure if that's exactly what he said. Cutscene time? I didn't think you'd come, Sora. <gasps> Good to see you again. Well, where are Donald and Goofy? Are they that important to you? More important than old friends? Instead of worrying about them, you should be asking about her. Kyrie! That's right. While you were off goofing around, I finally found her. Not so fast! No shenanigans aboard my vessel, boy. Riku, why are you siding with the Heartless? The Heartless obey me now, Sora. Now I have nothing to fear. You're stupid! Sooner or later they'll swallow your heart! Not a chance. My heart's too strong. Riku! I've picked up a few other tricks as well. Like this, for instance. <sighs> You can go see your friends now. Ah! <laughs> Let's get underway already. And keep Sora away from Kairi until we're ready to land. Hmm. That scurvy brat thinks he can order me around. What shall we do, Captain Hook? Nothing! The hold is crawling with heartless. Let them keep an eye on the brats. But, Captain, you know who is also down... Shh! Did you hear that, me? Oh, that dreadful sound. No. Can't Captain, say. I think uh, Riku is sure? uh, more ruthless pirate than Hook is. <laughs> oh, my poor nerves. You don't say. Yeah, it was definitely Kyrie. I finally found her. All right. <laughs> yep. Then let's go up and talk to her. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, but first, how about get down? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, kind of can't get up there to her if you're <clears throat> lying around. How you around. doing there? Looking for a way out? Peter Pan. Who are you? I'm the answer to your prayers. <sighs> okay, then. Fine. 
Have it your way. But you're stuck in here too, aren't you? Huh. Nope, I'm just waiting for someone. Who? Tinkerbell, what took you so long? Great job. So you found Wendy? Hold on. There was another girl there too? Are you crazy? There's no way I'm gonna leave Wendy there. Uh -huh. She must be pretty jealous. <laughs> Come on, Tink. Open up Just the door. Just because it's true doesn't mean you have to say it out loud. <laughs> hmm. I'm Peter Pan. I'm Sora. Okay. We're in this together, but only till we find Wendy. Not particularly friendly there, Peter. Anyway. Okay. Gonna save. There we go. <laughs> Well, Captain Hook said that the hold is crawling with Heartless. Including... Shadow Sora? Yeah. So, man, I've got... I've got an experience boost and a tech boost on Sora. He's gonna level up quite a bit quicker than normal. Ow. Really? You know what? Take that. Okay. Ooh, hello. Item over here. Mega potion. Okay. Not that I use potions that much. Generally don't find that I need to in most situations when playing on normal like this. What might be down here? And yes, I realized I said down here and didn't actually go down there right away. I can't actually attack. There wasn't enough space between where I was and the ceiling. I really should be using my magic more often. I've got plenty of MP. I guess I have, uh, you know, gotten it. So... In my head that... There are harder difficulties. It take a whole lot more care and effort to clear. But I'm usually thinking about saving as much MP as I can for just healing. As long as I, you know, don't get hit too many times, too quickly, and we have enemies around that will drop some health orbs, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Come 
That's everything down here. Oh, nope. Still more enemies. I don't know if I'm supposed to be exploring, like, everywhere right now. But I figure I'm just trying to look for where they've got Wendy and potentially also Kyrie. Because Tinkerbell said there was another girl in there with Wendy. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm telling you, these guys aren't too bad, but, uh, you know, fighting like six of them at once is a little more troublesome. Is Twitch talking about ads starting? Not quite sure what's going on with that. Sorry if that affects anybody. Um, oh, there's two different spots. Yeah, there we go. So, how come you can fly? Anyone can fly. You want to try? Aw, uh, haven't you cooled off yet, Tink? Just a little bit of pixie dust. There, now you can fly. Well, it's not just the pixie dust. What? So Wendy's not one of the chosen ones? There are seven, supposedly. And Maleficent says she's not one of them. Hoist anchor as soon as possible. Leave all the dead weight behind, including her. After the trouble of capturing her? And why those seven? What is Maleficent planning anyway? Who knows? As long as it means getting Kyrie's heart back. I couldn't care less. <laughs> You're wasting your time. The Heartless have devoured that girl's heart. I'll stake the other hand, it's lost forever. I will find it, no matter what. Uh, Captain? What? The prisoners have escaped. What's more, Peter Pan is with them. Girl, blast that Peter Pan. All right, then. Bring the hostage to me cabin, Smee. Hop to it. What is it, Tink? Peter? Peter Pan? Wendy! Please, hurry! The pirates are coming! What? I'll be right up there. Just hold on! Wendy? Yes? Is there another girl in there with you? Oh, why, yes, but she seems to be asleep. She hasn't budged an inch. Kyrie, Kyrie. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Just that little oh. twitch. <laughs> oh. Wendy. Hey, let's get up there. But it shows signs of, you know, actual, you know, life and consciousness. Um. Now how are we supposed to get up there? I assume we go out here and then go up another ladder. Come on. Take that. Okay. And we go up. Nope. Um, what 
but in here. Or is that where we just came from? Why did it target the barrel spider of all things? Ouch. Ouch. Yeah, I am noticing my stream dropped a... You know, more than just a few frames. I hope... Well... Or maybe I hope that is what caused the stream to think that I needed another ad break or something, because anything else would potentially be even worse. Ouch. Yeah, I'm probably going to need to heal myself soon. Or Donald could do it. Hey, look at that. Donald actually being helpful, healing. Actually, he really hasn't been too bad in this playthrough. I think most people that complain about him not healing enough just don't know how to customize his settings in order to, you know, actually have him do that. Um, Peter said we could fly, but we're not flying. Yeah. Pardon me? Well, at least I can go here and heal up a little bit before I keep moving on. Okay, but seriously, how am I supposed to progress further. Okay, climbing that does nothing. I wouldn't think going in, going in here should do anything. Uh, is it... Hold up. I have a thought. Maybe this is one of those moments where I actually have to have the, uh, you know, world-specific character with me. So let's see if I swap out Goofy and place him with Peter Pan, if maybe then I can uh, progress the way that I'm wanting to. No, don't go back down. Okay. So I've got him with me. That doesn't lead anywhere. That doesn't do anything. Hmm. Oh. Okay, that was it. Well, if that's the case... I'm hoping I can jump up there and not have to... do something else that would require having Peter Pan with me. get the right uh, perspective on that room there. Is it going to make me fight more? Okay, no. Good. 
Um, aha. There we go. We have ascended. And there's another save point right there. Well, I guess I'll actually save. Haven't done that in a little bit. We got a Trinity Mark here. One that we can actually, you know, use right now. A ladder! Um, I kind of want to see if I can get into any other rooms first. No, I can't. Never mind. Okay. So, up we go. Even further. Riku, wait! Ah, now it's time to fight Shadow Sora for real. Now. Oof. I press guard there. Self Shadow Sora does not get stunned. Oh, now there's multiple copies. Great. But, you know, I figure I'll be extra nice this time and give Donald a hand. He's helped me out enough times. Alright. If you keep dying, Donald, I'm not going to be able to help you, though. Okay, we're getting close. Somehow Goofy's still in this. Oh, now he's not. Oh, come on, I was in the middle of a dodge roll. Ouch. 
loose. There we go. Yay! Took a while, but eventually we got there. Raven's Claw. And there's an apostrophe S in there. That does not mean it's a Harry Potter reference. Dalmatians. Oh, yeah. I guess it's been a little bit since I've gone there. And another cutscene kind of thing. Come on, Tink. Not now. Well, this is as far as I can go. I gotta help Wendy. Okay, well, I didn't really have you in my active party that whole time anyway. Proterra Chain. That's not anything new, nor is it any better than any of the previous stuff that I've had. Well, poor word choice. Nor is it any better than stuff that I've had before that I would likely already have equipped. Nope, can't go there. That's the other room with the save point where we went up the ladder. So... Hmm. Then again... Did I miss a door going out from where we just were? I don't think so, but I feel like I should double check. Because I seem to recall there being a door that was behind Riku. Yeah, that one. Can we just go out that way? Nope. Be gone. Ouch. Come on. More of this, jeez. Oof. That one really hurts. Thanks, Donald. If it weren't for the other enemies around, then, you know, distract me from those pirate heartless. It might not be such an issue. Yeah, this is probably where I was supposed to go, but hey, at least I saved. Quite a codfish, that Riku, running off with that girl without even saying goodbye. Run off where? Tell me, where did he go? To the ruins of Hollow Bastion, where Maleficent resides. But you won't be going there. Typical bad guy monologue. <gasps> Giving away the evil plans. Unless you intend to leave your little pixie friend behind. <sighs> A 
hand over the Keyblade and I'll spare your lives. I'm glad I'm merciful. Unlike the Hardworth. So, which will it be? The Keyblade or the Plank? It is the crocodile that took me hand. Oh, me. He's after me other hand. I can't stay here. Go away. Oh, I can't stand the sight of him. Me, you take care of them. Why, Sora? Just so he chose to walk the plank instead of giving away the keyblade. I mean, I don't know. I guess there's a lot the keyblade could do in the wrong hands. <laughs> a lot of bad that it could do in the wrong hands. Thanks, Peter. Hey, don't mention it. You didn't think I'd leave you and Tink behind, did you? I mean, after what you said about Wendy, maybe kind of, sort of. Hey, Cure has been upgraded. Nice. Still not changing the party, though. In Neverland, Sora and his friends can fly while jumping. Press B, then press B to rise and X to descend. You're all going down. I'm telling you, being able to stun them is really handy. Especially because, you know, then they don't fall down and do the attack that they do when getting back up. Okay, you're gone. Now you can stop bothering Donald. Alright. Oh, flying pirates. I am choosing not to fly until it seems like I need to. Well, I guess I need to now. Now, oh. Yeah, I might have to do some flying now for these guys. No. That's a minor issue with flying, though. Not a whole lot of maneuverability. Or, well, not very agile, I should say. Any second now, it's probably going to charge, but not soon enough for it to hurt us again. Is that you, Smee? Did you finish them off? Aye, Captain. They walked the plane. Every last one of them. Ah! Peter Pesher, last you! <laughs> Ready to make a splash, you codfish? Now it's your turn to walk the plank. Fighting time again. See that? Like, I can't dodge that. Because I can't move out of the way quick enough. Oh. Okay, thanks, Donald. That was really quick with the healing there. Alright. Hopefully, now I won't have to worry about anything like that. 
while I fight Captain Hook. Oh, never mind. He's just gonna bring in more heartless every now and then. That other heartless ship thing is really becoming a bit of a pest. Come on. Good golly. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, uh, floating Goofy, for uh, getting in the way. I dodged. I blocked. Like, come on, man. I'm probably never going to use because I just don't use those. <laughs> I'd rather use my MP on regular magic, not like physical attacks most of the time. Oh, Kyrie couldn't wake up, so maybe she's really lost her. <gasps> Sora, I still can't believe it. I really flew. Wait till I tell Kyrie. I wonder if she'll believe me. Probably not. You can bring I love how the level of hope there just yeah, really quickly dwindled. If you believe, you can do anything, right? I'll find Kyrie. I know I will. There's so much I want to tell her about flying, the pirates, and everything else that's happened. What's that thing? What about the clock tower? You say there's something there. And we somehow managed to go to London. <laughs> it's never really explained that well. Oh, 
Hello, Wendy. You'll find her, Sora. Just don't give up. Okay. And we have treasure over here. Flare gummy. Supposed to be. Yeah, there's a save point up here. Um, and that's all that really we have to do for uh, Neverland. Again, kind of shorter than I remember. Um, is there anything else around the clock tower here? That I could do right now, aside from the one like optional boss fight thingamajig that I'm thinking might be available, but I definitely would not want to do right now because it's pretty hard. If I had any notion of attempting that, I would probably want to. Uh, have stop in my quick it, like in my shortcut menu here probably instead of gravity I'm forgetting if hitting this is all that I have to do to make that happen and if it is then who boy <laughs> No, that's just how we get the keyhole, I think. Oh, yeah, so I guess there was a little bit more to do. Yeah. Navi gummy. And another cutscene. I don't know who's talking here, so I don't know which voice to try and do. Okay. When we grow up, let's get off this island. Although it's young Riku, so I doubt his voice is quite the same. We'll go on real adventures, not this kid stuff. Sure, but isn't there anything fun to do now? Uh... Hey, you know the new girl? Uh, right. She arrived the night after the meter shower, or night of the... Oh? A keyhole in the Destiny Islands. Oh, hey, Lord. Uh, almost. It was almost reckless dinner, to bring out. her here without yeah, at least uh, using a vessel. You take care, Lord. Remember, Enjoy your dinner. Have a good evening. Too heavily on the dark powers could cost you your heart. A castaway. Though his world perished, his heart. Appreciate the lurk there, Lord. When we took the princess from his castle, he apparently followed her here through sheer force of will. But fear not. No harm will come to you. He is no match for your power. Her power? Yes. The untapped power that lies within you. Now, child, it's time you awakened that power and realized your full potential. going back to Neverland? Afraid so. But we can see each other anytime. As long as you don't forget about Neverland, that is.
Donald, you really need to quit laughing at Tinkerbell if you know what's good oh for boy. you. Oh boy, she's getting steamed again. Do me a favor. Look after her for me, will ya? What? <laughs> Someone's like, what? Why? Why do you want me to look after her? <laughs> Meanwhile, we get so many things. <laughs> Okay, back up this way, and um, so yeah, now we have a new summon. I still haven't used Dumbo or Bambi in an actual, like, recorded episode, so I might have to work on that stuff sometime soon, but uh, in the meantime, Sora can glide now. Then in the air, press B to ride the air currents. Hold down the B button to remain aloft. Ooh, jackpot. To receive more money and HP and MP balls in battle. Equip the entire party to boost the effect. Um, maybe sometimes that would be worth not having stun impact, but I think for now, really, I might just swap treasure magnet for that, because them dropping more things is more important than me having a magnet to get them easier. Plus, uh, you know, Donald and Goofy have treasure magnet stuff. So any of the money for sure will end up applying to everybody. <sighs> okay, you know what? Lucky strike. Just does that. Um, hmm. Alright, well, I've got some stuff to figure out apparently. <laughs> One more thing. Let's see if the... No, that's not the... Fairy Harp. Oh. Forgot about the Spellbinder. Raises max MP by two and significantly enhances magic and summon power. I lose two strength for it. Or I can... Keep... Or I can gain two strength and just keep my MP the same. Hmm. Uh, you know what? Let's see about the fairy heart for now. Anyway, I've got other equipment stuff to look into, but there's no sense in including that in like recording stuff. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to go somewhere else before I could head to Hollow Bastion. Let's see what comes up here. Well, we found the Navi Gummy piece. Let's go back to town. Sid will install it on the ship once we bring it to him. There's a tournament being held at the Coliseum. I hear there's a great reward for the winner. Honestly, I forget which one has which voice like that. Um, Just for kicks, because I've not been showing much of the Coliseum so far in any recordings, I'm going to cap things off with a little bit of that. I have access to the latest tournament and it's not like you know locked behind needing to do the timed version of the Pegasus Cup yeah there we go the Hercules Cup 
Okay. Thunder! So yeah, with each uh, tournament, there's one version of it where you do it with, you know, Sora, Donald, and Goofy all together. And then, after completing that, you unlock doing it with just Sora. And after that, you unlock a timed version of it. Uh, the previous two have only given three minutes, so that might just be the time limit for all of them. And then... Yeah, once you beat the timed version of it, if you beat the timed version, um, then it gives you the ability to uh, just choose a particular round of the tournament and fight only that. Too many different things in the floating pirate ship type heartless that I could target. That's what I was waiting for. I was not ready for it to do it a second time, though. Thanks, Donald. Alright, four gargoyles and three white knights. So many tech points. Oh. oh, right. This is the one that I think you gotta try to, like, just keep it up in the air. But for the timed version, it's a lot easier if you just, like, hit it once, let it fall, and then you're done with it. Not that I needed to do that here. Oh, geez, Cloud. Hello. Come on, I dodge. Come on. He's not even targeting me. Really? Okay, apparently I need to block that attack after he does the jump at you and plant the sword in the ground thing. Is that the best you can do? There we go. Okay. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, stop it with that attack. I can't do anything to you while you keep doing that attack. Okay. Oh yeah, the stun. Oh jeez. Kinda forgot he had this thing. Ah, uh, really? Apparently the game thinks I blocked at the wrong time. I dodged! Apparently I wasn't in the right spot to block at that time. Come on! Can you do something that will let me hit you, please? Really? This is getting kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Still targeting Goofy, even though Goofy's down. Doggone it, really? There. Okay. That took way more time and effort than it should have. Oh well. Ooh. Metal Chocobo Keyblade. Alrighty. Now back to some just regular kind of heartless. Hey. I saw it jump and figured that was coming. I was prepared this time. Damn. Alrighty. <sighs> Just a couple rounds left. Like literally two. Alright, that time you could have been a little faster with the healing, Donald. Alright, now it's just the pirate ships. Nice try. But I saw you trying to charge at me. Well, that time I couldn't avoid it, somehow. I guess my timing was just a little off or something. Yeah, you gotta dodge it at, like, just the right time. Why are you up so high? Oh, that's why. Come on. There we go. Alrighty. And then I think the last battle in this is Hercules himself. Yep. Show me what you got. Hercules, wait. Let's go one-on-one. -on -one. 
Oh, brother, what a show off. What are we gonna do? Let him go alone, I guess. Good luck, Sora. I'm not gonna go easy on you. Okay, one on one against Hercules. Yippee. Let me heal a little bit first. Oh, right. I gotta lift this up and throw it at him. Nope. And that stuns him. Sweet. But it only lets me get a couple of other attacks in. Oh, food. Nope. I'm um, probably better off just dodging all around. No, I do not. Never give up, never surrender. Oh, jeez. Wasn't expecting that right then. Yuck. I wasn't totally sure that was going to hit him because he was moving like that. Come on. Yep. Instead of just, you know, dodge rolling the entire time. And I kinda need some barrels. Where be the barrels? No. Uh, yeah. Wasn't totally sure that would hit him. Because of how far away he was. Uh, I'm so close. AP up. Nice. Nothing to it. And there we have it. The Hercules Cup is complete. We're the champs. Goofy obtained Herc's shield. what you mean about strength of heart. Mine comes from Donald and Goofy. Come again? If we stick together, we're unbeatable. Not even Hercules. But like you fought Hercules alone, so your logic doesn't follow. These guys beside me, I'm ready for anything. But that's not exactly what... Of course. Your friends give you strength. Isn't that right, Phil? The three of you together make great heroes. And as a team, I'm sure you can overcome anything. Ooh, and we got the Olympia Keyblade. Learned Yellow Trinity. Ooh, okay, that leaves a lot of stuff that I could do in between episodes. Okay. I think that is where I would leave things off then. Let me save real quick. So, yeah. That'll do it for the episode. Next time we'll get into, uh... 
I guess upgrading the gummy ship so we can get to Hollow Bastion. In between, I have a lot of yellow Trinity marks to find and uh, maybe some other stuff to do now that I also have Glide. So yeah, anyway, feel free to, uh, you know, tune in for live streams in between recording sessions when you might actually be able to get to see some more of the in-between stuff that I do. But anyway, that does it for the episode. Now that does give me a little bit to look into in the meantime. At the very least, equipment and ability wise. Alright. See, now I can also give Sora a treasure magnet. It was just a matter of time. So the only things I don't have for him are slap shot and then the attacks that require MP. Slap shot is meh. I don't really care much about that. And, again, the other ones are attacks that require MP. I prefer to have those be, you know, magic things that I use my MP for. But anyway, um, so... Metal Chocobo reduces max MP by one. Rarely deals critical blows. Has extra strength though. Powerful weapon that's difficult to difficult to deflect. Capable of inflicting mighty critical blows. Eh, but is that worth giving up an MP? Um Not that I generally use a ton of MP. But especially in the context of like, you know tournaments and stuff, that could actually make quite a difference, even just one MP. But anywho, um, all that to say, I think I might actually leave the Fairy Harp as the active Keyblade for now. I didn't get any more stuff like this, did I? Oh yeah, the Raven's Claw. Reduces dark damage, also raises strength and defense. Anybody I would want to put that on? Um. Doo -doo -doo. That would lower Goofy's HP. So with that, that would lower his AP. Never, ever, ever do something that would reduce AP. Just straight up. Um, strength doesn't matter too much for Donald. I could lower his strength to give him one more defense. And the dark damage resistance. That might actually be worthwhile. I'm gonna go ahead with that. Um, Alright. Save one more time. Just cause. Actually, you know what? I'm right here. Yellow Trinity. Oh, right. No, shoot. I shouldn't have done that. That's actually a story-related thing. <laughs> Kinda. Sorta. Okay. Well, glad I saved before doing that, because I'm not going to do anything else then. I don't want that to be saved, too. So, yeah, um, I think with that being the case, it's about time I wrapped up the live stream. So, thanks for stopping by, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll be doing another stream tomorrow. It's going to be a little bit different. It'll be kind of a celebratory live stream because of hitting 100 followers on Twitch. Which, I totally missed another follow. Thanks, Pinky. <laughs> Even though you might not be here right now. But yeah, uh, so... The plan is... It's going to be a lot more chill. 
kind of reminiscent of my Saturday streams, especially more so this past Saturday's stream. Um, I do have a little bit of something extra planned, but I think for the most part, it's just going to be me playing some uh, Power Wash Simulator, and then we can just hang out and chat and, you know, have fun talking about whatever's going on. Namely, you know, the fact that we've got 100 followers on here and uh, the other things that I'm thinking possibly related to that. But, anywho, that's all I've got for now. Let me try and uh, figure out somebody to raid before I wrap things up. Um, do, 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 let's see who all's on right now. If anybody who's watching has any suggestions, I'm open to it. Uh, but I have some ideas. Um, it's like, or I could just figure it out myself either way. So we've got Chrono playing Pokemon, specifically Scarlet or Violet. Uh, got Warrior of Light playing Pal World. Godly Geek is playing Fallout 76. Consumed by him is playing Lightyear Frontier. I'm not in, in totally sure. I'm not totally sure what that even is. That was <laughs> that was entirely and totally for a second there. Um. Born Again Gamers, just chatting for now. Samus, playing uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. So many options. <laughs> um, okay. Um... Trying to, I'm trying to remember if I've ever actually wound up raiding any of Chrono's streams before. Since I cannot recall doing so, I think that'll be my uh, plan for the moment. Anyway, <laughs> apologies for all the time that took. But anyway, I suppose that will be all for me then. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully, I'll see you soon for another stream. Feel free to check out videos of mine on YouTube in the meantime. Uh, and, yeah. Find me on all the socials and all that kind of stuff, too, if you want to keep up with what I'm doing. But, yeah. For now, I hope you're all doing well. Hopefully, I'll see you soon. But until next time, stay cool, everybody.